Welcome to Location, Cabrini College's weekly news program. I'm Jenna Rose DiGiacomo. And I'm Sean Ostrowski. Here's your news now. Have any non-perishable food items laying around? The Penn Liberty Bank's Wayne Branch on Lancaster Avenue is hosting a spring food drive this week. All donations are welcome from 8 to 5 during the week and on Saturday morning. The items benefit the Wayne United Methodist Church, and you could even win two Phillies tickets. For more information, be sure to call 610-535-535. 4580. This past week, my Cabrini Delta Xi Phi sorority sisters and I went to Dance Sport Academy in Ardmore. We learned the salsa, and might I add, what an exceptionally good time it was. For a drop in group lesson class, it's about $20, depending on what you're looking for. It's a great way to stay active and learn some new dance styles with friends and family. Should a SEPTA strike occur? According to NBC10, Philadelphia transit workers are continuing to work even though their contract with SEPTA has expired. There was a meeting this past week between transport workers and SEPTA, but no finalizations were in place at the end of the night. The union represents 4,700 bus drivers, trolley and subway operators, and maintenance staff. According to NBC10, a possible strike may occur unless negotiations are compromised. Seniors got the chance to meet with Cabrini alumni to get helpful tips as they start their new job search. Let's see what our location crew found out. There's a lot of tips that I'd have for them. One, be sure you're confident and, you know, talk about your transferable skills. I'm sure Dawn has talked about that a lot, but it's so important. One, that you understand your skills and how you can translate them into the business world. And then two, I'd say bring forth your personal self as well. Um, it's important that people not only get to know your skill sets, but who you are as a person and what you're going to bring to them yourself. So I, I think that's really important because you can't communicate or convey to an employer what you can do unless you're truly yourself. Um, yourself is what you know best and that's what you're selling. So I would say definitely understand yourself and what you want to do before you're heading into that great opportunity. The importance of networking is critical. Um, there's so many different elements to that too. I think one, when you're networking, you always want to build a relationship and make sure it's a long-lasting relationship. You always want to keep in mind who you're talking to because, you know, it's going to last you down the road and many years down. So always make sure you make a good impression and count on that forever. So I think communication is a big thing that you have to have with your coworkers. Um, people who aren't afraid to give constructive criticism because networking is number one. Um, you know, reach out on social media, but go to networking events, volunteer for, you know, the public relations, Philly, um, AIGA Philly, like just volunteer for as much as you can and make as many connections as you can. Well, networking is really important. It's, uh, you know, it's one of the main things that you can do to help get yourself a career. Um, you know, one of the things that I told the seniors out there is that you never know when you're going to meet somebody who's going to lead you to a job. You know, so you're always networking and, uh, you know, just be prepared. Just be prepared to be yourself and to talk about yourself and form connections. And a coworker, I look for somebody who's going to be uh, easy, easy to work with, and who's going to push me to be better, but also is going to be uh, complementary to my uh, talents. This is the beginning. It's not the end of something. Um, you feel like you've been in school for 17 years, and that this is the end of a long road, and it is. But it's really the beginning. You know, so take advantage of this time and do as many different things as possible. You know, just try to get your hands dirty in whatever you can. You never know what it's going to lead to. What I expect from a new college graduate really is versatility. Throughout your college career, you have the opportunity to try a lot of different things, usually at a pretty rapid pace. So whether you're involved with newspaper or radio or graphic design, no matter what it is, you've had a chance to do a lot of those things. And as a young person coming into an organization, versatility is usually a pretty hot commodity. You come in and we expect you to do a little bit of everything. When I interview someone and they come in, I can tell who's taken the time to do research on the company, who's taken the time to prepare questions and, and do all of that kind of background work, do that research before they come in. But really kind of focus on a few opportunities at a time. That way you can be best prepared walking in for that interview and know what you're going for and knowing what, and really it's most important because you want to know what value you can bring to that organization. And if you don't take that time to do that research, you're never going to know what you bring to that company. And that was your trip around the block. So Nick, I heard March Madness is right around the corner. What's going on with it? Yes, Jenner, it's right around the corner and you could win $1 billion courtesy of Warren Buffett. So let me tell you all about it. Mm -hmm. Brini men's and women's lacrosse teams both secured wins over the weekend. The men's team took on Nazareth College and won 20 to 11. 
Damien Sobieski scored a career-high five goals. Corey Elmer also chipped in with three goals and scored his 100th career goal. The Cavaliers are on a 6-0 start, which is tied for the best in program's history since 2004. The Cavaliers will hit the road as they look to take on Whittier College later this week. After two tough losses, the women's team got their first win of the season over Widener University 15-13. Sasha Wozniak had a career-high seven goals on 12 shots. Lady Cavs are set to open up CSAC play as they take on Notre Dame of Maryland University later this week. March Madness is finally upon us. It's time to get those brackets filled by the 20th. You do have a chance to win $1 billion on Warren Buffett's behalf for the perfect March Madness bracket. With all the upsets, favorites, unpredictability that goes into college basketball, to guess all the outcomes of all the games correct has never happened before. Location got a chance to sit down with Brad Koch to talk about his position as athletic director. Let's see what him and some of the head coaches at Cabrini here had to say. My name is Ken Prothrow. I'm the women's soccer coach here at Cabrini College. I've been here since 2000 and we've had a lot of athletic directors in that time. I'm super excited to have Brad here. He's done so much for all of our teams. He's always around, always accessible. Just last week, uh, I had a recruit here from northern New Jersey, and it was during a game. He took the time, came in the stands, and, and spoke to her, took time out to speak with parents as well. Uh, that kind of hands-on on stuff from an athletic director it is so huge. He's a great problem solver, and I hope he stays here forever. I found out about this position at Cabrini through a colleague, um, and I did know the previous director of athletics, Joe Junta, uh, fairly well. And, um, we actually had some contact uh, when the process was open and fortunately was able to get a phone interview and an in-person interview and well, here I am. <laughs> Brad has just been such an excellent addition to the Cabrini Athletic Department. He really understands the Division Three philosophy. He always puts the student athlete first, which is something I really appreciate as a coach and also the coordinator of student athlete wellness. So I don't think, um, you know, we couldn't be happier with, you know, going into the Basically, Brad's finishing his second year, and I think overall that you know all the coaches, all the student athletes are so pleased to have him here as our leader of our department. All right, I'm Cindy Eichler, the head men's and women's swimming coach. I've only been here two years. Brad was actually hired a little bit after I was, and uh, he's definitely one of our biggest support systems. He's incredibly easy to talk to, to work for. He's the type of um, boss and athletic director that you want to work for and um, he's been incredibly supportive of this program that we're trying to build here with swimming. Um, always trying to get us what we need, um, always looking out for us, and um, I couldn't be happier working here, and I think a big part of that is working for Brad. Yeah. At the time, Philadelphia College of Textiles and Science, which is now Philadelphia University, um, and started off in an entry-level position there in, in collegiate athletics, and worked my way up uh, the ladder, per se, and, and was an associate director of athletics for eight of the 15 years that I was there. And fortunately for me, this position uh, became available and moved right into a director of athletics position here about a year and a half ago. So come August, this August, it'll be two full years. You know, there's a longstanding tradition, a rich history of, of success here at Cabrini. Uh, I walked into a very good situation because there are a lot of um, great coaches that are here. Uh, and you know, that are used to success, or student athletes are used to success. You know, certainly in the classroom, but in the athletic arena to win multiple conference championships year in and year out, um, I wanted to make sure to continue that process. The goal, the aspiration that I've always had was to stay in collegiate athletics and ultimately become a director of athletics and could not be happier here at Cabrini. And that was your weekly sports update. Tune in next week for an update on Philly, national, and as always, your Cabrini sports. And now to Sean for your trip across the nation. Late last week, NBC Philadelphia reported that a Drexel University student was found dead in her sorority house. Sorority sisters walked into the house to find Stephanie Ross unresponsive on the floor. They drove her to the hospital where she was pronounced dead. Philadelphia medical examiners determined that bacterial meningitis was the cause of her death. Drexel University and public health officials are asking anyone who might have been in contact with Ross to get checked for symptoms of meningitis. Earlier this week, a U.S. Airways plane taking off from a Philadelphia airport, blew a tire and nose crashed on the runway. None of the passengers were hurt. Among those passengers on the plane were 13 Belgian firefighters on training duty. Within a split second, the firefighters used their skills and knowledge to help get all the passengers off the plane safely. CNN reported that a helicopter 
crashed not too far away from the famed Space Needle in Seattle Tuesday morning. The news helicopter came in for a brief landing, and a few seconds later after taking off, the helicopter burst into flames. All three people in the helicopter died. Within a few hours, representatives of the National Transportation Safety Board arrived to take over the investigation. We met up with chefs of Cabrini and got the chance to taste food from all over the world. Let's check it out. The purpose of the night is, first of all, to enhance the STEM experience in the Cabernet Corner. We feature five uh, chefs, including myself, from uh, one chef from Franklin Marshall uh, Stevenson College in Maryland, uh, Valley Forge Christian College, and Harkham College from up the road. So we're doing little small portions of gourmet food. Uh, so far I've only done Canada, India, and Jamaica, but I'm still hoping to get to Korea and Portugal before the night's over. Uh, I always love when they do the, uh, the chef's fair. It's uh, a great occasion to come to the cafeteria and get, get some fine cuisine. Not that our uh, dining services doesn't always do a good job, but they especially do a great job on the chef's fair. Everyone is up for a little friendly competition with some executive chefs and you get a little taste of everything. Um, I definitely would recommend people coming to this because it's probably one of the best nights at the cafeteria besides I think the Thanksgiving dinner. A lot of people come, it's good atmosphere, everyone's friendly and you get to meet like some of the other chefs from the other schools which is fun. Uh, I thought the food was great. Um, my favorite was the French Canadian one with the short ribs. I also liked the Korean one. I think um, that was the turkey. The tur pulled turkey. I would recommend the French Canadian one. That was really good. Uh, I think it was pulled short rib with potatoes on it and everything with gravy and uh, some kind of berry sauce on it as well. And also the Korean one was also good with the pulled turkey with the lettuce space. I don't know what that was though. It was good though. I liked Rodney Station. I'm a pretty plain eater, so a lot of the food isn't to my liking. But uh, the rice was good. Rodney had ribs I liked, but a lot of stuff is, uh, I don't know, not up my alley. I liked how the music was playing and everything. It just set for like a good environment. And uh, a lot more people come out to this instead of going to Jasmine's, which is nice to see, instead of an empty cafe for once. Uh, so we just uh, want to enhance what we're doing here. And it seems to be a lot of fun. Uh, not only for the students, uh, we hope, but uh, as, a, as a chef, too, we get to explore some different culinary things that we wouldn't do on a day-to-day -day basis. And that was your trip across the nation. So, Val, what's new in entertainment? I have news for you about Chris Brown, Fast and Furious 7, and David Beckham, so let me tell you more about it. Looks like orange will be the new brown attire. Hip-hop star Chris Brown was arrested on Friday, March 14th after being kicked out of a drug rehab program. Sources say Brown will be spending time in jail until his probation violation hearing on April 23rd. What do you think about Chris Brown's arrest? Tweet us at Location News. The filming for Fast and Furious 7 has resumed according to Universal Pictures. The cast and crew are back to work less than four months since the tragic death of Paul Walker, who passed in November. Reports state that Walker had already shot numerous scenes for the film. Despite Walker's tragic death, producers have made the decision to keep the scenes he has already shot. I wonder how the movie will be saying goodbye to Paul Walker's character, Brian O'Connor. Fast and Furious 7 will hit theaters April 10th, 2015. There is no surprise here. David Beckham has been named Underwear Model of the Century by Tommy Hilfiger in a recent interview. If you've seen David Beckham's shirtless underwear ads for H&M and Armani, there is no arguing with Hilfiger's statement. Let's admit it, we all know David Beckham definitely deserves that title. Cabrini College got the chance to present Sister Simone Campbell with the Ivy Willis Award. Let's meet Sister Simone and check out her award. I'm Sister Simone Campbell, and I am the Executive Director of Network, that is a national Catholic yeah. social justice lobby based in Washington, D.C. We have members all over the country. I'm a Sister of Social Service, that's my religious community, and I am the sort of well-known for the, being the leader of Nuns on the Bus. We work in Washington, D.C. to try to help create laws that are based in Catholic social teachings, that are based in social justice and uh, lift up the, the perspective where everyone is included. We leave no one out of our care. 
So at Network, at our organization, we are a staff of about 12 full-time people. And then we have what we call an associate program, which is for uh, recent grads to come and work for a year with us doing um, advocacy, education, and organizing to affect federal policy. And I met this wonderful young woman, a 24-year-old, and when I got to be at the White House to see uh, President Obama signing the executive order to raise the wages with the federal contract workers. And she told me that she works full-time in a, a store from a national chain of clothing stores and she makes minimum wage. And she says to me, you know, you wouldn't be able to tell by looking at me that I have to live in a homeless shelter because I can't afford rent. I don't make enough money to pay rent. And I thought, whoa, that's wrong. That is wrong. That's what we do is we take real people's stories and we use it to express what we need to do as a nation to make us a more perfect union. But I must say the best part is for me is connecting with students and with the good work that's being done here. It is awesome to me, the commitment of the school to integrate our Catholic principles into the whole curriculum. And so it is a huge honor to receive this award and to be able to share this moment of caring together about mission and about what really matters. And to give a voice to those who are voiceless, to persistently advocate for immigration and health care reform, to fight for the economic equality of those who are marginalized. It gives me great pleasure to present Cabrini College's Ivy Young Willis Award to you. I'm Sister Simone Campbell on location or location. That was your weekly entertainment update. Now let's check in with Jenna Rose for your news around the world. Sad news continues to circulate around the growing mystery of Malaysian Airlines Flight 370. It's not known how the plane flew straight over the Malaysian military and wasn't identified. With many questions unanswered, it's becoming even harder to find the missing aircraft, according to the New York Times. The home of the flight's pilot was searched this past week, and now authorities are turning their focus to the flight attendants and co-pilots aboard the aircraft. The Paralympics came to a close this past week in Russia, but will never be forgotten, according to the New York Times. The Paralympics competition takes place after the regular Olympics finish and is a chance for disabled athletes and those wounded in Iraq and Afghanistan to play in the Winter Games and to pick up their spirits. The Paralympics will always be a place for those willing to try, according to United States Olympic Committee's Chief Charlie Hubner. They are already underway in search of athletes for future games. And according to one soldier, he didn't know what he would be doing if the Paralympics didn't exist. New evidence reports that the Pakistani doctor accused of spying for the United States CIA to help find Osama bin Laden jail sentence has been changed. His time has been reduced by 10 years. According to the New York Times, the doctor had set up a phony vaccination campaign in the hopes of collecting DNA samples from bin Laden's relatives. Thanks for catching up with us this week. For Location Weekly News, I'm Jenna Rose DiGiacomo. And I'm Sean Ostrowski. Stay up to date throughout the week by following us on our social media platforms. Simply search Location News. Have a great week, Cabrini.